I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven and a half minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. What are you going to take up if you give up acting, huh? Macrame, maybe? Woodshop? Politics. Politics? <laughs> Why not? I wouldn't be the first actor to toss his toupee into the ring. Come on, you're not the type. What are you talking about? You know how many elected officials I've played in pictures. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. I can't stay awake any longer, George. It'll be on right after the Night Owl movie. It's 4.30 in the morning. It's a fantastic 10-second commercial, Helen, and I'm standing right there pointing to the car. Graham! Oh, so, uh, what? You on yet, Georgie? Not yet, but you're falling asleep. What's this on my forehead? Cheese dip, Graham. Oh, you fell asleep in the cheese dip. Must have fallen asleep in the cheese dip. Oh, huh? George, why does your TV commercial have to be on so late? Our ad budget could only afford fringe time, but that's okay, because a lot of people are up to... Graham! Oh, I'm up. Are you on the TV? No, but soon. Well, I'm all set right here next to the TV, I wouldn't miss you for... If your advertising isn't reaching the people you want, radio definitely will. With its many different formats, radio reaches every lifestyle. So you can target more messages to exactly who you want, when you want, at a price you can still afford. Okay, Helen, here it comes. Oh, Graham, it's George, huh? it's George! Oh, I'll get it. Let me turn off the TV first. Hello, George. Must have hung up. Oh, oh Want to wake up your advertising? Try radio. It's right on the button. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau. This is Andy Griffith. Shh. The red light's on. That means they're shooting on the set. That's Howie Adler standing over there in the William Morris suit and tie waiting to go in and see his client, Ben Gamble. You know who Ben Gamble is, of course. He's been at the top of the heap for about ten years now. <laughs> With that Bud Finn's face of his, he sure never expected anything but a, a second banana. But then you know what happened. Ugly was in, and so was Ben. And ever since then, he's been like a big kid with a lollipop, licking away at success and hoping it'll last forever. Well, I doubt there's anybody in this town who'd begrudge Ben Gamble anything he's gotten. That is, anybody except Howie Adler. There's one thing Ben acquired along the way that still sticks in Howie's craw. A wife. As an actress, Anne had it all. And as an agent, how he had Anne. If there were times when his interest in her was more than professional, well, who could blame him? But when she became Miss Ben Gamble, Anne was lost to the world. And to Howie. By her own choice. She decided one actor in the family was enough. But the way Howie sees it, it's all Ben's fault. If he just hadn't come ambling along when he did... Oh, they're still friends, all three of them, more or less. But come on, the red light just went off. That means the shooting on the set has stopped, and our story can start. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, His Honor, Hamlet, by Shirley Gordon. Our stars, Les Tremaine and Shirley Mitchell. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radials. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood's stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. 
solid as Sears. Sears showers more savings on you during our home and yardware sale. Here's something professional or handyman mechanics will appreciate. Our 79-piece tool set at big savings. Save $46 over regular separate current power and hand tool catalog prices. Only $69.99 for standard or metric sets now through April 28th. Sets include 3 eighths and half-inch drive, quick-release ratchet sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers, plus much more. All in the handy toolbox. Only $69.99 during Sears home and yardware sale at most larger Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Watch yourself. It's dark inside these stages. Careful not to trip over all these cables underfoot. That's Ben Gamble, the one with the cluster of people around him. It's a star treatment, they call it. See, everybody's anxious for the star to say something so they can right away all agree with him. Anybody see the news last night? Oh, I always watch the news. There's the cutest weatherman on Channel 2. I've been following that situation in Senegal. It's real ticklish. Oh, yeah, sure is, Ben. Ticklish, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I think yeah. is we ought to send old Andy Young over there to tell him a few things. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, right, Ben. That's just what we should do. I don't know, though. Any kind of intervention is risky. Maybe we better keep to a hands-off policy. Yeah, you're probably right at that. Hands-off would be safer. Yeah. Yeah. Here comes Howie Adler into the picture. You just know what he's thinking. Look at that lucky stiff. Ann Armitage waiting for him at home, and there he is, enthroned like some kind of Arabian sheik. Everybody hanging on his every word. A couple of cutesy pies draped on the arms of his chair with another one powdering that ugly mug of his. Of course, too much of almost anything can get to be a bore. Oh, oh, hello, Howie. What's up? Your option for this series, for one thing. Yeah. And I'm not so sure I want it to be renewed. Oh, you mean you want to take that picture deal in, in Tasmania instead, huh? No, no, that's not what I mean. All right, then what? You tell me why you don't want to go on making a fortune, doing what any other man in America would put his wife in hock to be doing. What am I doing, Howie? What have I been doing for the last ten best years of my life? Only riding on the crest of the wave? You got something against that? Making phases into a little box? Is that any way for a grown man to be making a living? Well, it seems to me it beats being a fry cook or a garage mechanic or any of the other jobs in your checkered career. Well, a little crankcase oil on my face would feel good again. Hmm. Man's face wasn't meant for a powder puff. No, yours wasn't, I grant you that. But as long as you're getting away with it... Well, that's the trouble. I am getting away with it. It's too easy. There's no challenge anymore. There's no excitement. Oh, I suppose standing in line at the B window of the unemployment office would be more exciting, huh? There must be another line of work I could take up. Well, we could trade jobs. I'll make love all day to a Miss Cutesy Pie while you go out and try to find me another line of work I'd like better. Oh, right? I'm serious. I want to do something different. Okay, so you're serious. So how about if I make a deal to let you direct your next picture? Uh, no, no, I, I'd still be stuck on a movie set. I want to get out into the real world for a change. Tasmania has seceded from the real world and Walter Cronkite didn't tell me? Look... Why don't you come over to the house for dinner tonight, and we'll hash this over. Over some hash. Okay? Okay. And? Hi, darling. Be right out. I fixed your drink. It's on the bar. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. <sighs> oh! Darling, my upholstery tax. Oh, I forgot. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Luckily, I swallowed the anesthetic before I sat down. <laughs> I was going to reupholster your chair this afternoon and surprise you, but I got involved in the kitchen. It's okay. You surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's safe now. Sit down and tell me. How'd it go today? Uh, same as yesterday. And the day before. Mm. And the 36 weeks before that. Mm. Sounds as though you have a bad case of the TV series doldrums. No, no, no. It, it's not just that. I, I just think I ought to be doing something more with my life than sitting around a soundstage. Like what? Well, I, I think maybe I have something more to offer than making faces into a little box. I, I mean, I, I keep up with what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And I have good, strong opinions about things. I mean, when I say something, everybody listens, you know? Everybody on the set, you mean. Oh, I, I know I'm not always right. Even though everybody always agrees with you. I, I just like to do something real for a change, that's all. You mean, give up acting? Oh, if you can, I can, right? Well, 
But what do you want to do instead? Do you have any idea? Doesn't matter. As long as it's the real thing. Hmm. Have you talked to Howie about this? Yeah. He thinks I'm crazy. Huh. But it doesn't matter what Howie thinks. What do you think? I don't think you're crazy. Oh, uh, that's my girl. <laughs> but I'm in love with you. What do I know? Well, then if I am crazy, you won't mind being crazy along with me, huh? Uh, Howie tried to tell me I already was when I married you. And now I suppose he's going to think this proves him right. Doesn't matter what Howie thinks, remember? <laughs> anyway, I have a dreamy casserole in the oven that will win Howie over to whatever you decide. I don't know. First you walk out on him, and now I'm talking about doing the same thing. Oh, darling, it'll be all right. Howie's a friend first and an agent second. You mean he's your friend first and my agent second? Oh, in that case, leave him to me. Uh, the morning paper's over there on the table. Why don't you check the classifieds? To find myself a new job? No. No, I'm not worried about you. But maybe you better find one for Howie. <laughs> They wear them in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears tough skins. The toughest jeans in Sears tough jeans territory. Fashioned from a permapressed tri-blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears tough skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available in most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. There's nothing so wonderful and nothing so awful as a man with a dream. The fellow stands there, head high, peering off into the far distance like something was spelled out for him and him alone on the horizon, which is about the way Ben looked when Annie went to answer the door. Howie, dear, come on in. Ann Armitage in a kitchen apron. What a waste. Oh, you won't think so when you taste my casserole. So, you've given up becoming the world's greatest actress to become the world's greatest cook. <laughs> Small comfort to your agent. Yeah, she's been taking out her creative frustration on the furniture lately. You be careful where you sit. Oh. And what are you going to take up if you give up acting, huh? Macrame, maybe? Wood shop? Politics. Politics? <laughs> Why not? I wouldn't be the first actor to toss his toupee into the ring. Come on, you're not the type. What are you talking about? Do you know how many elected officials I've played in pictures? I've been a judge, a mayor, a governor. You were a lousy governor, a bumbling mayor, and a crooked judge. You've always played rotten politicians. You even got an Oscar nomination once you were such a good rotten politician. <laughs> So who do you think is going to vote for you? I will, darling. And if you want to be a politician instead of an actor, it's all right with me. <laughs> I'm not sure there's that much difference. You both think I'm kidding, don't you? You don't think I'm serious? I hope you're not. But I have this terrible feeling in the pit of my ulcer that you are. Now, a couple of hours ago, you didn't know what you wanted to do, and now all of a sudden, you, you, you want to be president. I've been sitting here reading the paper. There's a lot going on out there. I want to become part of the process. Get involved. I told you, do something real for a change. Oh, so now you want me to book you into the Senate or maybe Sacramento. Darling, you can't just suddenly decide to go into politics just like that. I suddenly decided to go into acting just like that. But after you decided, you worked hard to become an actor. And if I decide to try for public office, I expect to work hard to become a public to servant. become to... what? What are you planning to run for, may I ask? I don't know yet. I'll have to wait and see what opportunity comes along. Knock, knock. 
This is opportunity. We happen to need another actor to run for governor. Not an actor, Howie. Not anymore. Get me out of the TV series and turn down any and all picture offers. Oh, some agent I'm going to be. And some living I'm going to make. Oh, I know, Howie. Ben was concerned about where his decision to quit acting would leave you. We're both concerned about that. Good. Then how about giving me back Ann Armitage to make up for losing Ben Gamble, huh? That'll still leave only one actor in the family. No, no, if Ben's going to turn politician, I guess I'm going to be busy learning to be a politician's wife. Why don't you throw in with us, Howie? Be my campaign manager. Help me get elected. He doesn't even know what he's running for, and already he's campaigning to get elected. I'm uh, just thinking ahead. First, I'm going to get acquainted with the issues. Then see where maybe I might make some waves. Honest Ben, the wave maker. Hey, that's not bad. We might use it. <laughs> Careful, honest Ben. <laughs> if you get Howie started on this, he'll have you stretched out on the floor of a log cabin studying by firelight. Mm, yeah, just so I wouldn't have to mention that the cabin was at Arrowhead and that you were studying a script instead of a law book. Forget it, Howie. No hokey publicity. This has to be all on the level. I'm no longer going to be Ben Gamble, the actor. Remember that. I'll remember, but don't you forget it. In front of the cameras tomorrow. All right. But just the same, tomorrow... I start changing my image. Ben, you should be late for your call. What are you doing? This is my wardrobe. It has to go. All of it? Everything? Who would vote for a guy wearing a baby blue velour pullover and a pair of hip-hugger jeans? The entire female population. And a few others I could mention. I'm going to give it all away. A politician can't dress like an actor. Neither can a bum on Skid Row. He'd lose his standing. I'll have to get some suits custom-tailored to look like they're not custom-tailored. And your hair styled to look like it isn't styled? Mm, that's a good idea. What happened to old Honest Ben? If I want the conservative vote, I'm going to have to build a conservative image. But you've always voted liberal. Yeah, well, if I want to put over a liberal cause, I'll need to win over the conservative vote, won't I? <laughs> that's my wave maker. Well, right now, it's still Ben the face maker. Hmm. I better get going. Bye, sweetheart. Ow! Hey, huh? you didn't shave very well this morning. Oh, who's that? I'm thinking of growing a mustache. A small, conservative one. To go with my liberal smile. But what about the series? Oh, don't worry. It'll never show up on camera. A beard I can grow overnight. A mustache will take me months. <laughs> Hold it. I'm giving a shadow under Ben's nose. Cut. Oh, sorry. I'm grooming my upper lip for a new role. Okay, break, everybody. We'll pick it up after lunch. Somebody take care of Ben's upper lip. Uh, how did I know? Look like dirt to me. Howie, Howie. How about it? Did you get me out? Well, it wasn't easy, but next week's filming is going to be your last show. Terrific! They're going to kill you off. They asked me how you'd like to go. Car accident, plane crash, fall off a tall building. Anything they want, as long as it's good and fatal. Yeah, second order of business. I think I got you an entry into the political scene. You have? Like what? How'd you like to be honorary mayor? Honorary mayor? Well, that doesn't mean anything. Presidents get themselves made honorary doctors, don't they? You gotta start someplace. At least you'll be on the scene. Ride in parades, choose beauty queens, open supermarkets. I do all those things now. Like Ann said, actor, politician, what's the difference? Well, I want to go to meetings and find out what's going on. Well, they'll probably let you go to meetings. Howie, I told you, I want to really do something. Look, if they think you're just a ham actor out for publicity, you can probably nose around all you want. And who can tell? Maybe you'll even find something to, to make waves about. Hey, you know, you may have something, Howie, old boy. Oh, thanks, Your Honor. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Our hot number is 1130, and we may have a hot number for you. A lottery ticket number, that is. It's the WNEW $25,000 lottery game.
to play, all we need is your name, address, and phone number. Then if we announce your name on the air any weekday between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., you win $100 worth of slot machine lottery tickets from the Empire Stakes game. You don't even have to hear it. But if you do and call our hot number phone line within 30 minutes, we'll double the number of scratchable tickets to $200 worth. You could also be one of our five grand prize winners when the lottery game is over to receive $1,000 worth of the new Olympic lottery tickets. It's easy, and we could announce your name soon if you send it to the WNEW Lottery Game, Box 1130, Grand Central Station, New York. Scratch a hot number, and it could pay off for you from our hot number, 1130. is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way, and if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Hush, hush, my darlings. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world, and I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. Ben's got his wish, no more the actor. He's getting himself ready to take on the world. A wise man once said, that's the worst thing can happen to you, getting your wish. Do you suppose that bodes ill for Ben? And? Darling, congratulations. Howie phoned and told me they're letting you out of the series. I'm going to be conveniently bumped off. Huh. Did Howie tell you the rest of his news? No, no, he said you'd probably want to tell me. Honey? How would you feel about becoming the wife of the mayor? Already? Okay, so you're only going to be an honorary wife. You're going to be honorary mayor? That's wonderful. Well, oh. it, it's not the real thing, I know. I, I don't even have to change my image. Lucky I didn't call the goodwill this morning. Right. It's okay if I still look like an actor, because that's the way I'm going to play the whole bit. Like a dumb, headline-hungry actor. Then I can prowl around all I want, and who knows? Maybe I'll uncover something I can really go to work on. Well, like what? I don't know. But there's probably plenty going on. After all, this is a big city. Mm -hmm. You know, even being honorary mayor of a city this size is quite a privilege. <laughs> I have to hand it to old Howie. <laughs> That's probably him now. He didn't have time at lunch today to give me all the details. Evening, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Come in, Howie, old boy. And how are you, Mrs. Mayor? <laughs> how does that sound, Ann? Like I should give you regards to Mrs. Metro and Mrs. Goldwyn. <laughs> Sit down, Howie. I'll fix your drink. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Don't do me any political favors. Uh, so, what happens now? How soon do you think I can show up down at City Hall? 
Maybe sit in on a council meeting or something, huh? City Hall. I want to find out what's really going on, remember? Well, yeah, sure, but... Well, listen, this isn't going to get dangerous, is it, Howie? I mean, what if Ben finds out something somebody doesn't want him to know? Well, I don't After think... all, you know, this is a big city. There's probably plenty going on. And whatever it is, I'm going to dig around until I find out about it. Now, hold, hold it a minute. What are you two talking about? Corruption at the top. Graft in big city government. What big city? What corruption? What at the top? Well, I'm just saying to Anne, being honorary mayor of a city this size is a privilege and a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. Look, I guess I didn't exactly make it But are you sure that Ben isn't going to stumble into any real trouble? (laughs) What kind of real trouble is he going to stumble into in Eucalyptus Heights, huh? Eucalyptus Heights? What's that? That's a nice little suburb out in the valley someplace. It's going to be your, your constituency, Your Honor. Eucalyptus Heights? The friendly place for your friendly face. Friendly suburbia? What am I going to do there? Oh, I don't know. Make speeches, shake hands, kiss babies, practice being a politician. A little fish needs a little pond to learn to swim in. Howie has a point, Ben. And if you insist, you can probably hang around Brinegar's office all you want. Who? Clarence Brinegar, the duly elected mayor of Eucalyptus Heights. You're in luck. His wife is a big fan of yours. Yeah, well, I'll wait till I see his wife before I call it luck. No, you won't have to wait long. That's what I dropped by to tell you. The Brinegers are planning cocktails in your honor this weekend. Oh. Cocktail party? Oh, maybe you can work your way up to a convention. <laughs> well, then I, I guess that's going to be the official launching of my political career. And my social life as a politician's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> Darling, are you sure you got the directions right? Mm -hmm. Seems like we've been driving for hours since we left the freeway. Howie's really starting me out in the bush leagues. Oh, I I see some lights. There's something up ahead. Well, if it's a large cigar-shaped object with little men filing out of it, I'm going to turn down the job. Listen, this is it. There's the sign. You are now entering Eucalyptus Heights. The friendly place for your friendly face. Population 212? 212 friendly faces. (laughs) Abraham Lincoln probably started with less. Oh, it's like a quiet little old-fashioned country town, away from everything. Perfect place to retire. Or be buried in. Chin up, darling. You can't always play to a packed house. Uh, That must be the mayor's house, the big one in the next block, huh? It has to be. It's the only house in town with the lights on. I'm Ben Gamble. Our guest of honor. <laughs> Come in. We've been waiting for you. Uh, thank you. This is Mrs. Gamble. How do you do? Just fine, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry we're late. It was a little longer drive than we thought. Oh, I know. As a matter of fact, I'm working on getting a new section of freeway out this way. Maybe you can help me push the project through channels. Hmm? Your honor? Well, I... Oh, uh... Mr. Gamble, I can hardly believe my eyes. My, you look even bigger and stronger in person than you do on my bedroom TV. Uh, My wife, Lydia, she's quite a fan of yours. (laughs) I'm pleased to meet you. Uh, This is my wife. Oh, yes, I remember you, my dear. I catch your reruns occasionally. Come along, Mr. Honorary Mayor. Let me get you a drink. I've lots to tell you about life in our little town. I imagine I have lots to learn. Now, I'm the fan in the family where you're concerned, Miss Armitage. Uh, That is, Mrs. Gamble. I've seen everything you've done. (laughs) Not everything, I hope. (laughs) Almost. Uh, Come along. We'll find our own quiet corner and you can tell me all about life in the big city. Oh, Anne, there you are. Where have you been? Cornered. Luckily, Mayor Brinegar got called to the phone. Hey, how did you get away? Told her I had to use the men's room. <laughs> she couldn't argue with that. Darling, are you sure you want to play politics? Well, this isn't any worse or better than a Hollywood cocktail party. Mm, I know. That's why we stopped going to them, remember? We'll break away as soon as we can. But I'd like to have a chance to talk a little with Brinegar first. Try to get a line on things. Here he comes now. I'll be happy to leave him to you. I'll go try to keep your one-woman fan club amused. <laughs> Thanks, baby. 
Oh, Miss Armitage, you're not going to desert us, are you? <laughs> Just going to the ladies' room, Your Honor. Oh, of course. I'll show you where it is. Oh, uh, never mind. Here comes your wife. She can show me. Mr. Gamble, you naughty boy. You deserted me. Oh, well, I didn't mean to, Mrs. Brinegar. I just, I just thought I might talk a little politics with your husband. And I have some fascinating stories about Ben, Mrs. Brinegar, that I'm sure you'd love to pass along to the ladies' aid. Really? Wait a minute. What kind of stories? Never mind, darling. You just light up a cigar and talk to the mayor. Yes, Clarence. Tell Mayor Gamble what you're up to. I mean what you're trying to accomplish. I'm all ears, my dear. What kind of stories? Well, Mr. Mayor, what are you up to, uh, uh, trying to accomplish? That A way to put our little town on the map, Mr. Gamble. Ah. Get that new section of freeway I was telling you about approved. Uh, bring the people here. Build one of them fancy new shopping malls. You know what I mean. What he means is he wants to turn our pleasant little country town into Clone City. A plastic copy of every other suburb in the country. Nelson, no one invited you into this conversation. Well, you know me, Mayor. I never stand on formal invitations. Anyway, as our city attorney, don't you think I ought to meet our new honorary mayor? Brad Nelson, Mr. Gamble, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Same here. Our esteemed mayor here is determined to make over our little town. Into a viable community. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Except that it would destroy everything it is now. A sleepy little village out of another century. Mm -hmm, where my kids can grow up playing on grass instead of concrete. Where you can still look up at the night and see stars. The real stars, Gamble. No offense. Oh, I've got you. You're trying to stop progress, Nelson. It's a lost cause. There's no reason I can't keep trying, Your Honor. And Your Honor, too, Gamble. If you're with him on this... Well, I don't know. I haven't had time to get my feet wet yet. <laughs> well, you have two places to do that, Mr. Honorary Mayor. There's a nice little river that winds through our sleepy little out-of-date village. Or there's Mary Brinegar's fancy new swimming pool. You can take your choice. Be seeing you. Uh, right. Uh, the less you see of Brad Nelson, the better. He's a troublemaker. Oh? Sees a bit of civic improvement and progress. Old, making way for the new, that sort of thing. Nelson's the type who'll lie right down in front of the bulldozer. Oh, the kind of man who acts on his principles, you mean. Rash actions and misguided principles. Nelson's even been arrested a couple times, disturbing the peace, resisting an officer. Watch out for him. He'll try to make a rebel out of you. Oh, I, I'm fairly peace-loving myself. No moving violations. Wise, very wise. After all, Gamble, we both know you're just in this for the publicity, right? You got me there, Mayor. <laughs> we wouldn't want to give you a bad press, would we? Oh, no, Your Honor. We wouldn't. So keep clear of Nelson. He's always trying to make waves. Know what I mean? Exactly. Good man. Welcome aboard. <laughs> You mind if I drop in for a minute? Sure thing, Gamble. I was expecting you. Expecting me? Look, I know you're in this just for the publicity, right? Well, seems I can't fool anybody around here. And I'm sure you've heard from Brittiger that I'm something of a rabble-rouser in this town. Well, he said I should stay clear of you, that uh, you'd give me a bad press. Brittiger may need to worry about a bad press, but you don't, do you, Mr. Honorary Mayor? Where you Hollywood people are concerned, anything goes, as long as they spell your name right, right? Oh, you got it. Well, this isn't Hollywood, and politics ain't acting. But if you want to make a name for yourself around here, Gamble, I think you might be useful to me. How about it? Sounds interesting. Good man. Welcome aboard. <laughs> No, he's, uh... Well, never mind. Don't tell me. I can guess. You know, he's really taking this whole thing seriously, Howie. He's lined up with the city attorney to fight Mayor Brinegar's plans to change the town. I think he's been watching too many Frank Capra movies on The Late Show. Remind him he's in real life now. He can't go charging through City Hall on a white horse. <laughs> Don't count on it. He rides out of here on one every morning. <laughs> That's an actor for you. You give him a supporting role in a B picture playing in the sticks, and he'll find a way to turn it into the headline act of a three-ring circus. You know, you may have something. When Ben rode out of here this morning, he was not only on his white horse, he was wearing his six-shooters. How's that? He borrowed a couple of guns from the studio prop department. Well, what the hell for? He said he thought they might work better than lying down in front of a bulldozer. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, folks. 
folks. Uh, <laughs> They're only blanks. Uh, right. We use them in my business all the time. Uh, we thought it was a good way to draw a crowd. <laughs> Your honorary mayor and I wanted to get you all out of here for a kind of community rally. What for? What are you up to now, Nelson? Well, as you know, your esteemed mayor, Clarence Brinegar, has uh, somehow gotten official approval to run a new freeway smack through the middle of Eucalyptus Heights. Well, what's wrong with that? Bring some life into this one-horse town. <laughs> one-man town, you mean. As usual, Mary Brinegar says it's all in the name of progress. But I say, as usual... It's all in the name of Brinegar. Well, right. Now, you've all been getting acquainted lately with our honorary mayor here, Ben Gamble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, mayor Gamble has been generously getting you all tickets to your favorite TV shows, umpiring your kids' little league ball games, driving some of you nice old ladies to the market in his fancy Ferrari. Well, as a result, turns out you've done a lot more talking to him than you ever would to me. Uh, and what he's learned is that a while back, before Clarence Brinegar made his big freeway plans public, a lot of you good people were talked into turning over sections of your property to a real estate outfit named Swift and Lamb. Uh, a couple of perfect names for a pair of phonies. Oh, yeah. That's right. And I've done some investigating, and I've discovered that Swift and Lamb real estate is, in fact, none other than... <laughs> Mayor Brinegar. Nelson, what's going on here? A little community meeting, Mayor, that's all. A little of your usual disturbing of the peace, you mean? I guess you must like it in our little jailhouse, Nelson. Haul him in again, O'Brien. Uh, hold it, Your Honor. You have no reason to arrest Brad Nelson. Uh, you're right, Your Honor. I have more reason to arrest you for illegal use of firearms. On second thought... O'Brien, take our honorary his honor in instead. Uh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Mayor. I, I I thought you didn't want to give me a bad press. Now, those weren't real guns. They were just a couple of harmless studio props. We use them in my business all the time. You, you forget. I'm a big star. You can't arrest me. Words out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Strawberries, stoneware with hand-painted strawberries, 45 piece set plus extra serving bowl, Sears Strawberries. Sears hand-painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks, and durable, this dishwasher-safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries, Sears stoneware with hand-painted strawberries. At most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radials. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood's stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. again with the concluding act of His Honor Hamlet. Howie, I was hoping you'd show up. Now, don't worry. I put up bail for you. And if that doesn't work, Anne's home baking a meatloaf with a hacksaw in it. She figured a cake was too cliché. You mean after all the trouble I went to to get in here, you're trying to get me out? You mean after all the trouble I went to get you out, you want to stay in? Well, that's the whole idea, don't you see? What I want to do is milk this for all the publicity I can get. Turn it into a three-ring circus. Yeah, it's just what I figured. And you can help. Get the press to play it up big. Oh, you may have switched hats, but you haven't switched heads. No, 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 no. It's not for me. But this is where being an actor pays off. I can draw the hot white light of publicity on all of His Honor Mayor Brinegar's shady deals. Are you, are you sure you know what you're doing? No. 
But Brad Nelson does. He's been working on this for months. But he still doesn't have all the proof he needs. Well, so you're staging this little sideshow of yours. To get the press out here on the story. Once a reporter or two starts a digging around, Brinninger's goose has got to get barbecued. Okay. I'll sound a clarion call, but I'm not sure that even Ben Gamble behind bars is enough to attract the fourth estate this far into the hinterlands. How about if we make it a double feature? Double feature? Ben Gamble and Anne Armitage. Anne? Well, even if you can get her to stop playing Julia Childs in a kitchen, how do you plan to put her in the picture? Her actor husband has been wrongfully imprisoned. She comes out of retirement to make a special appearance outside the jailhouse to win his release. I don't know. You, you think she'll do it? Look, you've been trying for years to get Anne back into the limelight. Now's your chance. She'll do it. Now, figure it this way, Anne. You're back playing the Chautauqua circuit. So is Ben, only he doesn't know it. Yeah, he'll find out when the show's over. Then he'll want to take off his party hat and go home. I know. He's like a kid. When anything stops being fun, he doesn't want to play anymore. Well, then he better stick to acting. The real world doesn't always work like that. What I'll never understand is why you gave up fame and fortune and me to, to marry a guy who's just a big kid at heart. Well, it wasn't because I wanted to mother him. Oh, don't worry, Howie. Ben will grow up one of these days. Well, let's hope it's before he gets elected president. <laughs> It's Lydia. Lydia Brinegar. Oh, hello, Mrs. Brinegar. Nice of you to come calling. I told Clarence I was going to drop by to see you. I've been so upset thinking of you being incarcerated like this. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, Mrs. Brinegar. I'm fine. Well, I brought you a little something to raise your spirits. A jug of martinis. Oh, that was a nice thought. Thank you. Mm, and two glasses. May I? Oh, why not? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you poor boy rotting here in this lonely cell while your wife is out there signing autographs, posing for the six o'clock news, capitalizing on your misfortune. She is? Mm. There are newspaper reporters out there? Mm -hmm. And TV cameramen? The town is crawling with them. Well, how about that? Well, it's going to be on every channel that my husband had Ben Gamble tossed in the who's gal. Right. Film at 11. I'm going to insist that Clarence get over here and release you immediately. Oh, don't do that, Mrs. Brinegar. I like it here. You have a lovely jail. I'm perfectly happy. But the reporters, they'll be taking your picture, too. Behind bars. Terrific. I never had my picture taken behind bars before. Well, that is, except in one of my pictures. Oh, yes. I saw you in that one. <laughs> you look so romantic with your prison pallor. <laughs> but I, I don't remember the story. What were you in for? I was a crooked politician. Oh, yes. I remember now. <laughs> the week that picture played on television, Clarence canceled our home movie channel. Where's your husband now, Mrs. Brinegar? I don't know. I haven't seen him all day. The reporters outside just checked with your husband's office, Mrs. Brinegar. Seems that he was suddenly called out of town on business. Really? Oh, what a shame. Just when our little town is having its day in the sun, so to speak. Oh, don't worry. The press is going to wait for him to come back. They are? Oh, how thoughtful of them. I'll go out and thank them right now. Clarence is going to appreciate it. I doubt it. What's up, Nelson? The jig for our esteemed mayor. Getting the press on the story did the trick, Gamble. They've dug up the proof we needed. So what happens now? The town is going to recall Brinegar from office and elect a new mayor. Who? You. Let's hear it for Ben Gamble. Man of Ben Gamble is here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I want all of you to know I appreciate your support. And if you vote for me, I promise to serve you honestly and faithfully. All right. Oh, he delivered that line better in the movie. Howie, you don't suppose they're really going to make Ben mayor, do you? It looks like he doesn't have to grow up to become a city father. Mr. Gamble, uh, can I ask you a question? Oh, you certainly may. You have a right to know anything you want about a candidate before you vote him into public office. What is it? Well, 
How does it feel to make love to Farrah Fawcett? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you, folks, that's a relief. For a few minutes there, I thought you were all taking my candidacy for office seriously. Well, no. <laughs> How are we listening? I'm listening. What I mean is... While, as your esteemed honorary mayor, I played a part in the recent proceedings, it was only a small part, as a supporting act. Howie, did you hear? I heard. The real leading man of this whole show showdown, the man who truly deserves your support as mayor, is that real dedicated public servant among you, your city attorney, Mr. Brad Nelson. Ah, oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need a movie star for Mayor Nelson's our man. Let's hear it for Brad Nelson. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Ben. Now you know how fickle a public can be. Oh, darling, you were wonderful. I've never been more proud of you. <laughs> Me too, pal. Well, politics isn't my game. I, I, I never really stopped being an actor. <laughs> you may not know it yet, darling, but you have your greatest role ahead of you. But uh, meanwhile, what do I do? I, I let that picture deal get by me, and I don't have the series anymore. Well, maybe you do. I'll see what I can work out. Well, what can you work out? They killed me off, remember? Oh, welcome back to the land of make-believe, Your Honor. <laughs> Quiet on the set. Roll them. Action. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Kai, okay. stand by, everybody. Um, I, I just want to sure. Uh, I, I want to make sure I got this straight. First, um, Ben made me so jealous that I bumped him off, right? Right. Uh, but now I'm sorry I did it, and he comes back to haunt me, and I dig his ghost, right? Right. I can identify with that. <laughs> welcome back, sweetie. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, Ben, welcome back. Yeah, yeah we thanks, are. thanks. Yeah. It's good to be back. <laughs> so let's get to work. Quiet. Roll them. Action. Why, after just a few laundrings, my fashion t-shirts look all out of shape. Not so with San for Knit Fabric T-shirt tops from Sears. They're 100% cotton, cool and comfortable, and treated with a process that helps these garments keep their shape, even when machine dried. So your fashion dollar keeps its shape, too. San for Knit tops in Mrs. Sizes are Sears' best. And this spring, when color is headlining fashion news, you'll be thrilled at the choice of rainbow colors. Dim lights, a crackling fire, and Sears Open Hearth Living Room Furniture help you feel the glow of days long past. It's cozy, high-back colonial-style furniture with solid pine trim. Available in a large selection of covers treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector. Complementing wood tables and accent pieces complete the charm. Enjoy its quiet, cheery warmth every day. Sears Open Hearth Living Room Furniture, built to be lived with. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Shop where America shops with a Sears credit card. You'll be able to choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services at everyday low prices. Just say charge it. At Sears, it's satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So visit your Sears store today to apply for your credit card. Or just phone toll-free 800-526-0444. Find out why Sears is where America shops for value. Remember, phone 800-526-0444. In New Jersey, residents call 800-652-2777. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guarantee or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. His Honor Hamlet was written by Shirley Gordon, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Les Tremaine and Shirley Mitchell. Also heard were Jesse White, Dora Singleton, Michael Gelman, Lee Millar, and John Heaston. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Dear Abby, a listener writes, Now that my husband's gone, I've tried to open my own charge accounts and have been turned down. It seems all our credit was listed in his name. Now I'm told I have no credit record in my own name. Signed, Stuck. Dear Stuck, this is a real problem for many women. 
Four out of five of you will one day be on your own. But if you know your rights, you can help protect yourself against future credit rejection. So take some advice from Dear Abby. Call or write stores where you and your husband share charge accounts. Have them listed in both names, yours as well as his. Say you want joint charge accounts listed as Mrs. Mary Jones as well as Mr. John Jones, so you will have a history of credit too. The law gives you that right. For more information, write for the free booklet, Women and Credit Histories, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. That's Women and Credit Histories, FTC, Washington, D.C., 20580. Yeah, that was about two weeks after Dad had his stroke. Did he have high blood pressure? Don't know. He's doing a little better now, but he can't speak too well. Has trouble walking too, doesn't he? Yeah, it's truly a shame. You have high blood pressure? I don't know. I feel okay. I'm not high strung like Dad. Whether you're high strung or low strung, whether you feel just fine or not, has nothing to do with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor in stroke and heart attack, but it has no obvious symptoms. It can only be detected by a simple, quick, and painless test. The American Heart Association also wants you to know that black Americans, as a group, are more likely to have high blood pressure than whites. We don't know why. But high blood pressure can usually be controlled if it's detected. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Let's listen. He weighs eight pounds, 11 ounces. What are you talking about? That's what it says. It's about time that you could read a scale properly. Seven pounds, three ounces, one hour, and eight pounds, 11 ounces the next. Now, really. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to Sears Radio Theater. <laughs>